Up next, elementary students work for a spot in the Super Bowl. And we learn about a word that has spread throughout the district. This and more coming up. Season 4's last episode of Frisco ISD TV starts now. Welcome to Frisco ISD TV. I'm Maddie Eggers. And I'm Morgan Yarnick. Thanks for joining us. In It's Elementary, My Dear, students are taking the field, but not for sports. Jemai Harris has the story. Bogart students and faculty filed into their own arena to witness their very own Super Bowl. Of learning, that is, students were recognized for winning in academics. Teachers see a benefit in recognizing honor roll students. I think that being part of the honor roll can prepare a child to deal with their successes in a positive way for the future. So those who aren't on the honor roll currently, I don't necessarily think that that means that they will not be academically successful in the future. The students that are, are on it absolutely love it, um, but the students that are not on it, I think it encourages them to try harder. Um, they see that being recognized is something that's special and makes them feel good, so it, um, I think it pushes them to work even harder. Smith believes Bogart's environment helps students be the best they can be. I've been at several different schools and I would say Bogart is one of the best. Um, just encouraging kids where they're at and um, helping encourage them to be the best at where they're at. And then when we see their weaknesses, we, um, we support with uh, academic tutoring, small group instruction, things like that to make sure they can achieve the best they can. Bogart students seem to enjoy making good grades, but also understand how it impacts their future. If you already know your multiplication tables, then they will help you when you face real life situations. Mostly I think I'm going to use math because like adding like when you like buy stuff like you have to add all everything together. I like getting good grades because it's just more fun. I just study hard and try to get 100 and do my best every time. If I get good grades, I can get into good schools. These students were recognized for making the honor roll, and our research indicates that Bogart is one of 17 out of the 30 elementary schools in Frisco ISD to reward this accomplishment. Choosing to do so is left up to the individual campus. I'm Jemai Harris for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Jemai. In the middle of it all, some students are not allowing recent budget cuts to wilt their moods. Instead, they are creating some color during this dark time. At Cobb Middle School, teachers and students fed up with unruly weeds took action to clean up their campus. Armed with a few tools and determination, they spent the day planting fresh greenery and flowers. Well, like all the schools in Texas, we've had some budget cuts this year. One of the things we lost was our maintenance around the school, and so National Junior Honor Society and Student Council and Eco Club kind of did the prep work before today, and then we opened it up to the entire school to try to make the outside of our school look as awesome as we are inside. Administrators saw the event as a way to teach students about responsibility, community, and conservation. I think it really pulls the, pulls the community together, you know. I really think that the kids and the parents and even the staff will you know, look back on today with fond memories. Students seem to get the message. It was beautiful before, but now it's even better. It costs less money than having a company out here and doing it. Organizers say that events like this are the bedrock of unity and school spirit. I would say that we've had probably over 150 kids that have come up for at least 30 minutes today to help pick weeds, parents, um, community members, so it's been great. You know, that expression, many hands make light work, is, is so true today because we made a profound impact in a really, really short period of time. I'm Jacob Rimes for Frisco ISD TV. They really got their hands dirty for their school. <laughs> they sure did. Seniors are rewarded for their work in high school as the district helps finance their futures. I got the chance to see FISD show students the money.
In Frisco ISD, caring for students doesn't end when they cross the stage. The Frisco Education Foundation continues to invest in their futures. The Frisco Education Foundation Scholarship Night is held each year. Seniors from high schools throughout Frisco ISD are chosen to receive scholarships from a selective application process. Each student is called up to the stage to receive their award. Friends and family fill the stands to support the recipients. This year, over $500,000 in scholarships were awarded. It pleases myself as well as the foundation board when the students receive a scholarship. We know that they see it as um, a way of acknowledging them for their efforts. Students have high praises for the opportunity provided by the district. I was awarded the Frisco Academic Merit Scholarship for $1,200. It's really exciting. Um, I worked really hard these four years and I feel privileged that they chose me over all these other distinguished scholars. I'll be attending Oklahoma University next year and I'm planning on majoring in engineering. They picked me out of a thousand kids, a thousand seniors in this FISC district and um, it makes me feel really good and proud that I'm part of the FISC community and that I'll be going to uh, school and make them proud. I will be attending college community for one year and then hopefully transferring to University of Arkansas. And the major I would like to do uh, probably in the medical field but I'm not exactly sure yet. I am very honored to have been chosen for these scholarships. It will be very helpful for college. I will be attending Texas A&M University and I have chosen, it's called the Science and Visualization major and basically animation. Parents appreciate the foundation and the aid that these scholarships bring. It means a, a, a good uh, financial commitment to our child's future, but it's just recognition by the, the companies and the, the Frisco community that they really value our children. We're very happy. It'll help out with her college. Well, it'll be a help for us as we're trying to get him ready to go, and so any little help, we'll take it. Foundation Director Allison Miller says applying for the scholarships isn't fun and games. Review committees are looking for well-rounded students. It's not just about academics. They want to see kids who have been involved in extracurricular, community service is huge, as well as maybe work experience. So I just want all students to know that it's more than just academics. You've got to have that well-rounded environment during your uh, high school years. The process for receiving a scholarship is very simple. The students just need to log on to the software site, register their names, fill out the application, complete it, and submit it. Parents feel this night makes lasting memories. As a parent, it's a great opportunity uh, to give back to the community. We're really appreciative of parents that uh, people take the time to provide scholarships and invest in the future of the graduates of Frisco schools. Well, I was really impressed with how well they organized it and how much work it went into um, getting this all together. And of course, I'm very thankful. As the night comes to an end and scholarships are in hand, hopefully these seniors are able to accomplish their dreams with this extra support from the community. I'm Morgan Yarnick for Frisco ISD TV. Looks like lots of students and parents see the benefits. CTE students are bringing Frisco's past into the future with their latest project. Misha Caldwell has more in High Tech Happenings. CTE architecture students are measuring up to the history of Frisco as they bring old buildings into the digital age. We are making a digital record for the Frisco Heritage Association of these old restored buildings. So we're just going to, like in case a fire or a storm um, knocks the buildings down, they'll be able to have a record for future architects so they can come in and rebuild them how they were. Instead of instructor Mark Nethery giving students an inch, he gave them miles of freedom to explore the design process. They're getting some experience outside of the classroom uh, without the direct supervision of the teacher which is giving them the opportunity to manage a project themselves. Uh, therefore, they're going to be responsible for solving any problems that come up during the project on the site, and, uh, and they'll be responsible for completing it themselves. Getting it right takes time and more time. Why it's taking us so long to do it already is because since the buildings were built like over 100 years ago, um, not everything is square, not everything is exactly um, like how a modern building would be. Things are like different length and they're handmade, so it just takes longer for us to get the exact measurements. It all depends on how many measurements we have to take, how long we have to do, and how many times we have to double check the measurements. On this project we've been working about 
a month now, and we've had to come back several times to just measure and then remeasure and then remeasure again because things aren't lining up when we start doing the drawing. So it, uh, how long it takes is always dependent on how many times we have to double check our work. They're building up on their knowledge for career goals while keeping history alive. This project will give us like insight to how older buildings were built and maybe will help us with our future design like endeavors and stuff. It will be good because we can add this to like our portfolio and stuff to help us get into college. I think I'll probably get some good experience getting to work from previous projects with creating custom floor plans and then going onto a site and getting the actual plans and being able to recreate drawings. The important thing that will be taken away is that old buildings need to be preserved. We need to have an accurate record of what they are and how they were built so that we can recreate them or make improvements on them without taking away from the fact that they are this historical building. I'm Misha Codwell for Frisco ISD TV. We got the scoop on the latest form of testing in schools. Now the policy changes are posing problems for students and teachers. We take a look at the issues that technology has brought upon this new form of testing. Here's Jamie Miller with more. The STAR and of course exams replaced the tax test for high school freshmen this year, and some are still unclear about the differences between the two tests. You have 12 into course exams that they will have to pass in order to graduate along with the credits for the courses. You have to meet a certain standard on each individual test, then you have to have a cumulative score and meet that score for each subject area. The EOC score for each one of those assessments will also count 15% of the final grade of those classes. STAR could be taken one of two ways, on paper or on the computer. Freshmen who took the test using the computer experienced numerous problems. Computers were freezing up um, and a lot of them, it was taking them probably about 15 to 50 minutes between each question to load. So we continuously had to reboot their computers or switch them to a different computer in the lab. In between each question, I'd have to wait like five minutes. Like a couple of times I dozed off in between and the teacher had to come wake me up. It took me a long time to answer each question. In a test that I probably could have gotten done within the first hour and 30 minutes, it took me about two hours to three hours to finish. It, it got like annoying. It always aired on me when I was doing my essays. So I always had to restart my essay and did that about five to ten times. So I just gave up on it because like each time I had to rewrite it, it progressively like got worse and I just really put no effort into like the last half of the test. As a proctor I felt really bad for them just because I already know it's hard enough to take a test, um, especially one that you need to pass, that you know you have to pass to move on to the next grade. In the end, a mix-up and setup instructions from the testing company Pearson caused the problems. One of the things they recommended this time was for a specific network path to be designated as the primary path for backups. Okay, so in case something went wrong with one of the kids' computers, their work would be saved to this backup location. So we followed that, and it was not good for our network. The question many were asking was what the district was going to do about it, so the problems didn't happen again. We didn't want to redo, of course, what had already happened and was not good at all on Monday and Tuesdays. And after the necessary changes were made, testing has resumed as normal. Since that last round of testing, We've done over 200 sessions of online testing around the district using the exact same tools and the same setups, mm -hmm. and it's gone beautifully, just like, just like it always has in the past. So. And what about the actual test? The STAR EOCs are supposed to be more difficult than the tax test, but students disagreed. Well, it was easier than tax, but I'd rather take it on paper, and I like tax because it's less test and such. Easier. It was easier. I would say, but it was more difficult to do. And with more star testing around the corner, the district and its students are hoping it goes well. I'm Jamie Miller for Frisco ISD TV. What's swag? Everyone's talking about it. Well, in Frisco ISD, swag is different at every school. Here's Sam Stockard with more. Swag. It's everywhere in today's culture and Frisco's no exception. From football to religion, it's not hard to find, and it means something different for many throughout the district. Our team each year selects a theme, and it's been a lot of different things in the six years we've, we've been here. But uh, this year it was swag, and those, those uh, letters stood for sacrifice will achieve greatness. We decided that Stronger with Almighty God pretty much encompassed what it means to be a Christian, that we can't do anything without God. Swag to me is like style and like 
yourself. Your swag is like who you are. Swag's origin started in Scandinavia. It made its way to a Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, and in the 1800s they used it to mean money. And now schools are using it to bring students together. As far as the idea of swag in general, I think because a lot of our students really were able to kind of connect with that term since it's a popular term to be swag or, um, or to have swag or, um, or to get their swagger on, that kind of those terms, um, it just it provoked a little interest and they wanted to know what it was about. I put swag on my letterman because I wanted to be original and stand out from everyone else because everyone put Red Hawks, so I just put something that would stand out. I think they've responded well, the players have and coaches have and uh, parents and I think it's a theme that really drew everybody together, you know, not just for the football team but there was a lot of kids in the student body, faculty that bought into it, you'd see them with those shirts on and there's just a lot of different directions. Swag has affected each program differently. I mean we sold probably um, twice as many FCA shirts than we did last year and we sold to folks that had never been to FCA and they just really they wanted to wear it they wanted to see you know they really like the picture on the back of it um, and so that really made us pretty excited. We took our entire football team over to uh, the DFW airport to an event called Meet the Troops and uh, it's simply you know different uh, uh, troops that are returning from you know overseas and uh, but it was really neat because we had a chance to, to stand there and to greet them and to, you know, maybe hand them a water, just shake their hand and thank them for their service to our country. And to me, there's no greater service than that. Uh, you know, that sacrifice has achieved greatness for us, which is our freedom, you know. And so uh, just try to find ways to allow that to infiltrate our football team. And, uh, and it really helped us along the way because it was a theme that we could always come back to. We can always talk about sacrifice and why that leads to greatness and what does greatness look like. Well, I think it's fair to say swag is here to stay. I'm Sam Stocker for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Sam. Well, that's it for Season 4 of Frisco ISD TV. Be sure to join us for Season 5 of the 2012-2013 school year for your latest Frisco ISD coverage. I'm Maddie Eggers. And I'm Morgan Yarnick. Thanks for being with us.